Welcome again to the Ivory Tower Collections. Today's video is going to be a little different and a little shaky. I don't have it on the tripod, so I'm actually holding it and filming this in real time. Uh, and you're looking at a picture of Commando, specifically Commando on the 7800. But uh, I'm showing this to you because it is actually being output through S-Video using a new circuit that I heard about about a month ago. I guess it's actually been in development for longer than that, but... Anyway, for those that don't know, I've had a, a lot of problems being, uh, I guess, satisfied with the other S-Video solutions that have been presented over the years. And I've tried different modification boards and what have you, and none of them just never really gave me any good results until this one. And that is that little guy right there. The UAV, specifically Revision D. I have one installed inside my 7800 now. I just completed that last night. Let me uh, describe more in detail about how it was done. The installation is pretty easy, and I'm going to put together a more detailed document on how I did my installation. Um, of course, you can set yours up or do yours however you want. But uh, yeah, so let's, let's check it out here. Here is the UAV board. Specifically, this is the revision D of the board, and uh, you can see why it's called the UAV. It says UAV right there. Now, it's not, of course, related to a drone or, or a Predator uh, drone craft like you see on the, on the bottom of the board here. I believe it stands for Universal Atari Video. Uh, I'd like to think of it as the ultimate Atari video. But the guy who designed and created this, his name is Brian on the Atari H forums, that's spelled B-R-Y-A-N, originally developed this as a replacement circuit to provide S-Video and composite, better quality composite, on the Atari 8-bit computer line. And in the process of that, it turned out that basically it could be used for pretty much any Atari system, both game and computer system, uh, at least with the 8-bit line. So, yeah, what is the UAV? Well, again, as near as I can tell, and again, I haven't read up on all the specs, but basically it's a complete replacement video encoder circuit for Atari systems. Basically, you tap the necessary connections you need for Luma and the color burst signals, and this captures them and re-outputs them to whatever you want on the opposite end here through the screen connector. Now, the original boards, there's a couple of different ways you can buy these. The way I actually bought the board was as just the basic kit, which is basically just this and some wires. And then I paid an extra dollar to get this additional connector that I can solder on. And the reason for it is because if you take a look, there's tiny little screws at the top. You can actually attach your wire leads from off of your video connections directly into these openings here and tighten them down using the screws. This allows you to have basically a solderless connection to your video connectors and make it easier to do repairs or to uh, experiment. So yeah, I thought for the extra dollar it was worth it to have this cool little connector. Anyway, the UAV it gets installed internally inside your computer or Atari system. In this case, I have it in my 7800. And yeah, capturing the original video signals off of the both the Maria processor and the original Tia, it's, it re-outputs a new cleaned up video. So let's take a look. Okay, here is my 7800. Now I've already taken the case apart on this to make it a little easier to see. Additionally, I also have the RF shielding removed, but normally I would have that in place. Okay, just putting the cover down. Here in the upper corner is the UAV fully connected up. Now basically the way the UAV is installed is there are marks on the board itself with numbers. You might be able to see them here like 1, 2, 0, 3, S, etc. And then there's another point right here in the center I've got where it says TCOL and there's another one here that if I turn the board around says CON right there on the, on the left hand side of these uh, connections. So these are the points that we're concerned with on a 7800. Specifically, the ones with the numbers, the TCOL, which stands for TIA Color Input, by the way, and this one here marked CON, which is actually the Maria or the Maria, sorry, the Maria processor's color, in, uh, color burst input. 
And then the other connections here are actually your video outputs. You've got two ground points on here. There's one on the far right and another one that's the second pin in on the left. And then from the, I'll just use my thumb to cover these. So we've got the uh, Maria color burst in, a ground. CH is actually your chroma output. LU is your luma output. CV is your composite video output. And then another ground. So there's actually two grounds on here that you can use. And of course they're tied to each other, so either one will work. So yeah, so I've got the UAV board, and you just have to find a place inside to install it. It's fairly small, so it can pretty much fit just about anywhere. You could use some Velcro or something like that and attach it off the top of one of the chips or so. Plenty of room. It does require uh, a five volt input and a ground, which are marked right there between the UAV logo, positive five on the left, ground on, or yeah, positive five on the left and ground on the right. Number of ways to tap that off the board. I'll show you what I did. Now, because I have done other video modifications on this 7800, that's why it's got a lot of uh, surgery marked on it. Um, I already had removed the RF modulator. Now, the cool thing about the UAF is that you can leave the RF modulator in place because it is its own video encoder system. It doesn't really matter if the RF is there. You're, you're grabbing the video signals before it gets to the RF, so it doesn't really cause any, any interference, as far as I've been told. So the way it works is those different numbers I talked about on the UAV correlate to different connection points along the resistor ladder here that's attached to the various values, such as the luminosity pins, and the color burst signals as well as a sync uh, pin from off of the Maria graphics chip and the Tia. So basically that's it. You just find a place to put the UAV, install it in your system somewhere, and then you run wires and solder them into the appropriate numbered uh, openings on the board to where they correlate on the resistance ladder along the edge here. And I'm gonna provide a document, a PDF or something that I'll create that'll make it easier to know where these connect. I sort of figured all this out based on a picture I looked at that you're, it doesn't look much different than what you're looking at now, but I realized that that doesn't work for everybody. Um, but let me show you where I grabbed my five volts and my ground from. Now, the document that I saw actually recommended grabbing the ground right where you see that, and then from right next to it, you'll see these two big, tra or these two big traces that run through the entire 7800 main board through the center. Those are actually ground and five volt rails. Nice. So you can actually grab your five volts from anywhere on the left hand side thicker trace. So you got a lot of unused solder vias that you could actually attach a wire to to get your five volts from. Uh, and also use the one on the opposite side for ground. Now I'm using the ground main rail for my UAV, but my five volt power is actually coming from the old five volt input from where the RF modulator used to be. No real reason for it other than it was right there. It was a nice short distance. So just easier to just make a quick little wire run there. And then uh, as you can see, my other wires go from the UAV where they need to on the resistors. And then on the output lines here, I am using both composite and S-Video. So I have those going out to the appropriate connectors. There's my S-Video. My composite sits underneath it. Not sure how well I can show that on camera with the lack of light but you get the idea but i wanted to talk about the audio because a lot of the other 7800 video modification solutions have included parts where you input audio and then output audio to rca jacks the uav does not have this so i wanted to tell you what my process was first of all you'll need to locate these two resistors let me see if i can turn this around to get some better light on it You need to locate those two resistors right there. Now I can't remember right offhand what they are marked as. Let me see if I can see underneath them. Well, I can't see them right now. But you need to take those two resistors and you don't need to remove them. You just need to cut them on the north end of their legs. North end being that the top of the 7800 is the north and the bottom of it is the south. Lift them up, 
solder them together and then take uh, your wire you could use one I actually have two I have both a left and a right which are just wire dual mono but you just take the two leads and uh, you just solder off at the end of those two resistor points and run it to a capacitor for filtering and let's see I did this a while ago so let me see if I can get the value on this particular capacitor that I'm using looks like a 10 microfarad 50 volt of course you don't have to use a 50 volt that's probably what I had on hand you just needed a 10 microfarad capacitor and again that's what I had uh, and that's going to come off of your the positive side of that if I'm not mistaken yes and looking at this positive side of that needs to come off of the connection from your two resistor points by the way these two resistors they're actually the audio outputs that then eventually end up back into the old RF modulator and the reason why you have to lift up both of them is because one belongs to the TIA sound which is the primary sound you hear in most 7800 games and the other one belongs to the pokey for pokey enhanced games so that's why you have to bring up both of those and tie them together that's how you get a balanced sound source now a lot of install guides will tell you to attach your audio input off of the south side of those two resistors and that will not work what will happen is you'll end up with unbalanced audio where you can barely hear the pokey audio and the TIA just completely overpowers it when you do it the other way around it's actually a little reverse the pokey audio is now a tiny bit louder than the TIA but uh, but they're much better balanced overall anyway so from the negative side of the capacitor I have another wire that comes back off and eventually splits off to the two inputs or for my uh, actual audio connectors so easy enough on that um, so I just wanted to mainly show you guys how this was uh, installed in my particular 7800 this does all fit together nicely even with the RF shield in place back on top of it I just took it off on this so that you could see it better and wanted to describe the area where I actually grabbed the audio from uh, since the mod board does not include a method for handling that so yeah, I'm going to accompany this with some uh, quick gameplay footage to show you the uh, quality of the signal, both composite and S-Video, and uh, perhaps uh, also throw a couple of screenshots in here. And uh, yeah, so finally, it's taken several years, but I'm very happy and uh, I've gotten uh, a nice good solution for S-Video and composite from my Atari 7800.